let's look at covalent compounds. In a covalent compound, the electrons are shared. That word, covalent, co is a prefix that means sharing. Valent refers to valence electrons. So covalent means sharing valence electrons. Covalent compounds are when we have two nonmetals reacting with each other. Neither nonmetal wants to give up electrons. They, they would form anions by gaining electrons, but they won't form positive cations. And so they get around that by sharing. And this is, you know, this is pretty typical of women is like, well, let's just share this and we can both be happy. So molecular compounds have shared electrons. And we represent this by at neighboring atoms sharing some of their valence electrons. And those valence electrons that are shared count for both atoms. So let's look at hydrogen and oxygen. So hydrogen has one valence electron, right? <coughs> and oxygen has six. Hydrogen wants to get one more valence electron because he's a little guy. And he's, he's like, the octet rule is completely out of my reach. I'm just going for the duet rule. That's the first energy shell filled, two electrons. So hydrogen says to oxygen, hey, give me one of your electrons. Oxygen says, no way. I'm looking to get two electrons. You give me your electron. And hydrogen says, no way. Okay, and so they're not willing to give one to the other. So what they're going to do is they're going to share. So if this oxygen and hydrogen share those two electrons, then hydrogen feels like it has two because it has the one that it originally had and it also has the one that oxygen is sharing with it. Now oxygen feels like it has seven, which is closer to eight because it has its original electron plus the one that's being shared. So we're still not completely happy. What will happen is here's another hydrogen looking to share electrons, and it's going to share that other unpaired electron with oxygen. And now oxygen feels like it has eight, because you count these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They all count for oxygen. The shared ones also count for hydrogen. And we think, well, how can you do that? Well. My husband and I have six children. If you ask me how many children I have, I'll say I have six. If you ask him how many he has, he'll say six. Are there 12 children in the house? No, thank goodness, there's only six. But I count them as mine, and he counts them as his. Okay, so they count for both of us. And that's what happens with the shared electrons. They get counted twice. They count for both atoms. So in water, hydrogen and oxygen share their electrons so that each hydrogen ends up with a duet and each oxygen has an octet. And so that's, this is how covalent compounds form. Here's another illustration. So here's hydrogen and these two electrons. We usually draw them that way. Um, these two electrons are shared. And so hydrogen counts them as belonging to him. And oxygen counts all of those electrons, including the shared ones, as belonging to her. And here's hydrogen, and he counts those. And so they all are happy in this way by sharing. Any questions? My husband had a great analogy last night about why this forms a bond. So it's like two greedy children with a candy bar. And hydrogen's holding on to one end of the candy bar, and oxygen's holding on to the other end of the candy bar. And neither of them is willing to give it up. And so then they're essentially stuck together. Because if you won't let go of the candy bar, then you have to stay next to that person, right? So hydrogen and oxygen are both holding on to these shared electrons, and that keeps them together. It's a covalent bond. There are bonding pairs and non-bonding pairs, or lone pairs. So in this Lewis structure for water, 
These electrons that are between the two atoms, between hydrogen and oxygen, those are bonding electrons or bonding pairs. There's two there and, and two there, two, a pair. And these electrons on oxygen are not being shared with anything. Those are called lone pairs or non-bonding pairs. So it's important to be able to identify which are the lone pairs and which are the, non -bond uh, the bonding pairs. And a lot of times we'll show those, um, those bonding pairs as a line or a dash. And that represents a covalent bond. And one way you can think of this is like you were connecting the dots. So it's like you took this that we had drawn previously. and you connected these dots. So a dash, a line, represents two electrons. And that line is always shared. That's a covalent bond. It's two electrons shared. Sometimes we represent them as two dots and sometimes we represent them as a line. It kind of depends on uh, what's more convenient. As we go on, we'll see them as lines more often. Lines are a lot easier to draw. It gets really tedious drawing all these little dots. Any questions? Is that what we'll be doing in OCHEM? Um, in OCHEM, yes, you will be concerned about lone pairs and where the electrons are, and they'll be moving around, and yeah. The, this concept of Lewis structure is really important in being able to understand organic chemistry. So do you remember we talked about the seven diatomic elements? Horses need oats for clear brown eyes, those guys. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. As elements, they all form diatomic elements. Lewis theory helps us to understand why. Let's look at bromine. So bromine has how many valence electrons? Seven. seven. Is bromine happy? Almost happy, but not quite. What if bromine gets to together with another bromine atom and they each share one electron with each other? Now they're both happy. Yeah. Cooperation. I bet you didn't know that atoms cooperate. Cooperation is a good thing. So would bromine go towards bromine before it would not necessarily. So this bromine has eight, and this bromine has eight. Bromine, if it's all by itself, will react with itself. It will share electrons and form these diatomic molecules. Now, once you have those diatomic molecules and you mix it with something else, it may or may not react, depending on whether how the energy favors things. Yeah, and, and so this, when bromine, when two bromine atoms get together, then they become much more stable than they were by themselves. Bromine atoms are very reactive, but bromine molecules are not as much. Is that why it's diatomic? That's why it's diatomic. And so bromine, iodine, chlorine, fluorine, they all have seven valence electrons, they all do exactly the same thing. What was the mnemonic device that you used? Horses need oats for clear brown eyes. So that was, I don't even remember what chapter that was, but that was a while ago. It also explains hydrogen. Hydrogen's diatomic, right? Hydrogen has one valence electron. Well, it's trying to get two. If it could get together with another hydrogen atom and they could share now it has its duet, and the other one has its duet. So hydrogen does this as well. The other elements, um, nitrogen and oxygen, we'll look at those in a minute. Any questions? Yes? Why is the, why, if, if these two can become diatomic and they can balance one another, mm -hmm. in the sense of becoming as stable as possible, then why, are they, then why is that explosive? Because it, it's also very willing to do that with other things. They're not very loyal. 
hydrogen atoms are, yeah, they're playing the field. Debauchery, yeah. It's embarrassing, it really is, to know what hydrogen does. So that was... <laughs> you just die. I'm trying. I'm not holding them together. That's okay. You just feel free to fall apart. Um, we talked about sharing one pair of electrons. That's called a single bond, but sometimes atoms will share more than one pair of electrons. So let's look at oxygen. What's oxygen going to do? So oxygen has how many valence electrons? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And oxygen is a diatomic element. Here's another oxygen. So they're saying, well, hey, look, if we share, I'll share this electron with you. If you share that one with me, Okay, we're, we're better, but do they have octets yet? No. What if they share these as well? Now they're good. So let's draw that a little differently. So they're sharing there. And so this one has eight. And this one has eight. We call that a double bond because they're sharing two pairs. And double means two. That makes sense? They can also share three. <clears throat> Push the wrong button. No? Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Okay. Is it true that the more electrons they share, the weaker the bond is? Actually, no. No? Because here's the slide I meant to go to and didn't go to. So double bond, two electrons, two pairs of electrons being shared. Double bonds are shorter and stronger than single bonds. And just as an example, I'm not going to quiz you on this, but if you look at two oxygen nuclei and look at the distance between them, which is one way to measure bond length, if you have a, a double bond, it's 121 picometers, and if you have a single bond, it's 148 picometers. Pico is 10 to the minus 12 meters. So there is a significant difference there, 121 to 148. So what happens is that when you're sharing more electrons, it pulls those atoms closer together, and it's stronger. Because now those kids with the candy bar, they've got two hands. You know, we've got, I've got one candy bar with this kid and that hand, and one candy bar with, with this hand with the same kid, and we're held by two hands. That, that doesn't work when we get to a triple bond, because yeah, people don't have three hands. <laughs> But I do think that every time you have a child, you should grow an extra arm. It would make shopping for clothing very difficult, but then you could actually hold on to the little critters. Let's look at nitrogen. Nitrogen is also a di diatomic element. Nitrogen has how many valence electrons? Five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So two nitrogen atoms trying to get octets, what can they do? Well, they could share that pair, and this pair, and that pair. That's called a triple bond. So we could indicate that like this. And then there's those dots there are the lone pairs. They're not involved in bonding. And the lines are the bonding pairs. Or we can draw it like this. And see that this one has eight, and that one has eight. That's a good question. Does forming bonds create energy or take energy? They create energy. Breaking bonds. Um, when you break a bond, it's like pulling apart two things that are glued together. 
you have to expend energy to, to break the bond. And when the bond forms, it gives off energy. So does it take more energy to break these bonds the more things are stronger? Yes. A nitrogen triple bond is going to be stronger than a double bond. And so it's going to require more energy to break. And the reason that things will react, like you guys were asking, well, if hydrogen is good with a duet, then why is it explosive? Well, that's, it does require some energy to break that hydrogen-hydrogen single bond. But if it forms a bond with oxygen, that releases more energy. And so, yeah, there's an expenditure of energy to break the bond, but then there's this big payback in energy by forming this new bond that's stronger. And so that's, that's at the root of chemical reactions is this energy of things breaking and, and forming. So the second that the bonds are created, covalent design, they are, they are, they are becoming exothermic explosive energy. So forming water is what gives fire energy? Yeah, forming water and carbon dioxide. So you break, you break the bonds in, like, say, the, the methane, the carbon-hydrogen bonds, and then you're forming hydrogen-oxygen and carbon-oxygen bonds. You're also breaking the oxygen-oxygen bond. But overall, the result is that energy is released. Energy is stored in chemical bonds. It's a, it's a form of potential energy. And so in propane, in gasoline, in anything flammable, certainly, there's a great deal of stored potential energy. And that is released in a chemical reaction. But not in the sense in which the bonds are being broken, but that they're making new ones. It gets released when the, the, the new bonds are formed. Yeah, but not when they're being separated. Right. And it, it requires an initial input of energy. If you just mix propane and oxygen together, do they burn? No because you need some input of energy to break the first bonds. And so the spark, you need a spark. That will cause a few bonds to break. When the new bonds form and release more energy, they provide energy to break the other bonds. And then overall, you get this tremendous release of energy. So is the explosion, the heat that comes from it, that's just re reinforced and amplified infrared? Yeah, it's like a... It's like, um, what do they call that? It's sort of a cascading reaction. Yeah. And that happens in, in nuclear reactions as well. Yes, question? Um, so for plasma, is that just the electrons just moving around and making bonds? And is that what's happening there? Or would you, would we learn about plasmas? We're not going to talk about plasmas, talk in about plasmas in this class. It's so cool. It is cool. Google it. Okay. Google it. I don't want to talk about plasmas. Plasma is the fourth state of matter. We don't talk about it in intro chemistry. I don't want to talk about that either. What is going on here? I don't know what's going on. Um, in theory, in practice, no. Um, so we did that. Can more than two elements share electrons? Yes. Each nitrogen atom achieves an octet. I, I did something wrong in the slides last night. I was sleepy. Triple bond, so a triple bond is three pairs of electrons being shared. Those are even shorter and stronger than the double bonds. Um, nitrogen, nitrogen triple bond has a bond length of 110 picometers, and a nitrogen, nitrogen double bond is 124. So the more <coughs> bonds you get, the tighter it is, the, it pulls them in closer. And if you think of them like as being a rope or something, if there's three, it's going to require more effort to break than just one. Okay? Pardon me? How do they get a nitrogen to form a double bond? You can get nitrogen to form a double bond by letting it form a bond with something else so that it still gets an octet. So nitrogen, with its triple bond, is more inert than these other guys. Yes? So why are they considered, uh, considered diatomic, like triple atomic designs, since they become almost inert? Well, 
They're, they're diatomic because they have two atoms. Yeah, it, it doesn't refer to the bond. Yeah, yeah, but I can see where that would come from. Yeah. I, was, I was just trying to think of another way of explaining it in a right. concept. Yeah.